G'day everyone and welcome back to the Cyber Minutes podcast. My name is Max and today I'm joined by Flynn and we've got some cool topics to go through today. Uh, firstly, we just want to bring up uh, something that we've heard in the past and also have just sort of thought it was relevant for the kind of events going on in Australia cybersecurity at the moment, which is, is Australia being targeted or more specifically, what makes us a target? As well as the, we want to just dial back on the Medibank breach and talk about some of the psychology when people who have been hacked by cyber criminals uh, just start making claims and uh, using like certain buzzwords to describe the people who have attacked them and kind of what this could mean if they're trying to say face a little or how that's kind of going. But let's go back to Australia being targeted. Flynn, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what exactly this means? Yeah, yeah. So this was something that I actually heard um, quite a while ago at a conference, probably years at this point. And it's something that I remembered while um, just having a shower, actually, is that they basically said that, oh, we don't think that Australia is being targeted. We just think it's a coincidence because the hackers are just basically... Um, doing a shotgun approach as you would describe it max and yep. basically picking up low hanging fruit which might be true but at the same time if that approach ends up target hitting australian companies more i would argue that that means australia is being targeted because we are the low hanging fruit yeah um also on top of that i think you mentioned about why we are a target i i think we're pretty much in agreement that Australia is not very mature with their cyber security. Um, and with that being said, we're uh, a wealthy nation with, you know, some big companies and stuff like that. So, you know, if you're a criminal, I suppose, are you going to go after a well-kept fort or are you going to go after like a little pit that just has a lot of money in it? Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. Um, I think that's good. that's a really good way to put it. Generally, Australia cyber security, exactly like you said, has been behind the mark and that's that's the whole reason why the government's put in this 2030 cyber plan and trying to cooperate so much with uh, Australian companies it's because generally we're quite behind compared to the rest of the world and our maturity is frankly shit most of the time not all the time not every company is but you know there are a lot a lot of really low-hanging fruit that we've seen you know you know Optus last year had a um you know an API that was left open that contained customer data like that's something that should really never happen for such a big company and you know at the result of it is that they've had a massive data breach so clearly there's some issues with complacency in in Australian cybersecurity and exactly like you said we're a super wealthy nation uh, compared to our population and there's a lot of money that comes through Australia. And it just makes us an, an obvious target. And I think that's exactly what cyber criminals see is that we're a target that has low, I guess, low barrier for entry and massive payout. So in, in the context of is Australia being targeted per se? Yes, 100%. Yeah, it's not really a, it's not really a question of, oh, uh, you know, we can debate it a little bit. No, 100% Australia is being uh, targeted because... Uh, more than more than some other countries. Like I'm sure if we compared the statistics on Australian cyber attacks versus New Zealand cyber attacks and put in a I don't know a, a multiplier based on how big the country is and all that, you'll see that it's massively out of proportion in favour to Australia being attacked more and more and more than what New Zealand would have if they were as big as a country as we were. Uh, I yeah, think that's um, that's fairly obvious. Also, even from a geographical perspective, like I, I know cyber, we're not really talking about geographics a lot of the time, but, you know, um, we're pretty f close to some big APTs, you know, mm -hmm. namely, you know, China APTs and stuff like that as well. Yep. Um, and that's going to be um, an enticing thing, which we probably don't even hear about a lot of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes with um, those sort of attacks. Um, but that can obviously be a contributing factor as well compared yeah, to yeah. I don't know if you're in like the center of the world. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, our proximity to places like North Korea and China, you know, could have something to do with it as well. And I think a really big part is geopolitics. Also, the fact that we're aligned so closely with the the United States and the United Kingdom, 
uh, and we're not in NATO. Australia's not in NATO, but we're in like alliances. Yeah, we're yeah. we're in alliances with all of those countries that are in NATO, and it means that the the battle lines have kind of already been drawn against threat actors from China and Russia and North Korea. So it it gives those APTs a direct motivation, uh, as well as a you know pretty hefty potential monetary gain to go after us. Yeah, absolutely. So next topic we were going to go over is the psychology of um, kind of the immediate response that some companies might have after being falling victim to a cyber attack. So I'm, I'm a little bit less familiar with this, Flynn. Uh, do you want to just quickly uh, give the rundown? Yeah, so the biggest example I've seen of this is with uh, Medibank. So Medibank's the big buzz again. Uh, 2022, they obviously had, had the massive, massive data breach. And now uh, recently, the uh, Information Privacy Commissioner has basically come out and said that they were negligent and they are going to um, take legal action against them. But if you go back and look at some of the examples from Medibank, they actually took a lot of um, terrible precautions with their crisis management. But one thing I would note is that the way they described the hackers, they didn't really take a lot of ownership a lot of the time. And what they described the hackers as is they said, oh, they're criminals. The the criminals are targeting Australia and the criminals are taking your data and stuff. And sure, technically they are criminals, but yeah. the way that they're saying it is that it's intentionally deflecting away from them by saying like, hey, these are bad people. It's basically saying like, if someone broke into your house, yeah. you wouldn't be at fault for that, would you? Which would be the case, I would say, majority of the time. Maybe if you left your door wide open and a bunch of money in the front door, probably not good. But that being said, these big companies have an obligation to protect their data, their client, uh, their customers' data. And to say that it's these methods that, they might be valuable actually. Like sometimes if you, maybe your company is breached, I wouldn't be say relying on this, like how Medibank did, but using this alongside with other tools such as a really good example recently was um, Red Cross. Red Cross had a data breach and the reason nobody's critiquing the Red Cross is because people are actually commending them because they did a really, really good job of being transparent. They were giving like updates all the time about what's going on. Yep. Um, and they did a fantastic job. Yep. Um, and I'm actually not fully aware if they referred to them as criminals, but this shouldn't be your only tactic as to how you target uh, crisis management. No, um, no. It is a tool, but, um, you know, completely deflecting and... Um, saying, you know, voiding uh, ownership of the problem uh, yeah. is not the way to go. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's exactly right. And uh, in your analogy, probably how I would slightly change it is imagine you left a window open at nighttime and you forgot about it and you went on holiday. Then someone opened the, the window that was um, left unlocked, came into your house, stole your stuff, and you wanted to file an insurance claim to to you know get that some of that stuff back, and instead of trying to go over the fact that you made a pretty big mistake that could void the entire insurance claim, you just go, these criminals have come into my house and stolen all of my goods. How dare they? These criminals, you know, and they they've just thrown thrown words around and tried to be persuasive in that sense when realistically the problem lies with them and yeah that's like i saw a really good um linkedin post from from tony uh tony harp uh which ha had some good information as well so medbank in the medibank in the midst of the in the uh cyber attack they said that they would release their independent report to the public i still don't think they have have they no no so i've, I've spoke about this a fair bit as well is that their initial response to the breach was actually good. So they basically said that, uh, you know, something's happened, blah, blah, blah. I think they made, they made a massive mistake with what they said because they said originally that, you know, it's not a big deal. And then I think there was like two instances and then they basically went like, oh shit, this is actually a big deal. Mm. But apart from that, they basically said, they set up this website saying, 
hey, we're going to keep updates here about what's going on. Update never happened there. Right. So they had the initial update that there's been a breach. I think they sent out emails to people saying there's been a breach as well. And then there was nothing there. It's it's called a hero page from what I um, can remember. Right. Where um, the same thing, the Red Cross did a good job at it, where they keep constant updates on this um, page about what, what's going on. Um, right. And they didn't do that at all. They set up the page and then they didn't even um, touch it at all afterwards. Um, and then, yeah, they said they were going to do a report and that never happened as well. Yeah. Uh, it makes me think of like, um, like uh, I don't know if you've seen any in like medical TV shows, but whenever there's a disaster at a hospital in the TV shows, and I'm assuming this happens in real life, they'll set up outside the hospital like an information center so you can check if your loved ones are in the hospital um, if you haven't got contact with them. And it seems like what they were trying to do is kind of like that where it's a direct outlet to talk to the public which is yeah like you said an amazing idea but if they just never put an update in there then what was the point it's, the opposite. it's terrible yeah, yeah it's the you've just made a false promises exactly yeah and you know i'm sure that's come into consideration from the australian information uh commissioner who's now looking to sue medibank for negligence right yeah uh absolutely i mean um you know we say it a fair bit, we don't know everything that's gone on behind the scenes, but a claim like that is pretty, pretty big. Um, obviously, it was something that we had speculated um, yeah. for some time now. Um, but, you know, that could be a, potentially a really, really big hit from Medibank. And we're already seeing that they're trying to stay face with it. Um, they're, you know, saying that, oh, you can get $300 back if you stay with us from the, to... I think the end of the financial year or the uh, next financial year. Yeah. Yeah, they're already trying to save face. It's really not looking good. You know, even though I would say Medibank still is a prominent figure in, you know, the insurance sphere, one thing somebody that I was doing training for pointed out is that that may only be because they've got had to spend like another three times the amount on their marketing to, you know, really... I suppose, stop the reputational damage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, they're just going to try and sweep it under the rug and make you forget about it, usually. That's the that's the way to go. But the thing is, with when you upset the community, and, you know, in a sense, we, as uh, as our platform, we are kind of a, a, I wouldn't say a voice of the community, but we're a part of that community. Us bringing it up, and the government bringing it up, and the government being sued, and, you know, other people, other prominent figures in the community talking about it and constantly repeating it, it makes it harder to happen. So it makes it harder for the company to just forget about it and move on, which is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder that the Cyber Minutes podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own, not necessarily their employers. Advice discussed is general advice. We promote ethical discussions, not illegal activities. Have a cybersecurity question? Send an email to cyberminutespodcast at gmail.com as we'd love to answer it. Stay cyber safe.